feel like we haven't talked about something properly, like, creepy in a while, so let's talk about bobbit worms. This gorgeous specimen up here is a bobbit worm. They are a type of bristle worm in the polychaete group that is found largely in the Atlantic Ocean, but also found some places in the Indo-Pacific Ocean. And they likely get the name Bobbit Worm from the case of Lorena Bobbit, where she performed a little impromptu um, castration. And you know what? Good for her. Now, these worms are found typically at the sea floor or occasionally in coral reefs where they are ambush predators just kind of hanging out until they find something they want to eat. They have a number of quite sensitive antenna coming up from the front of their head and when those antenna sense something like a small fish or other crustacean, then they pounce with those massive incredibly powerful jaws. These jaws are so powerful, in fact, that they have been observed to cut their prey just entirely in half. Good for her. They can come in a variety of different colors, including black, brown, kind of tan-ish, or purple, usually with this very, honestly, very pretty, gorgeous, rainbow iridescent shine. They're also incredibly large, larger than any worm has any right to be. The longest specimen ever found was just under 10 feet long. Yeah, feet. Now, they're not strictly carnivorous. They will eat pretty much anything they can get their massive jaws on. Largely live prey, but not exclusively. They will eat things like um, algae and other plant matter, as well as scavenge for just any material that they can get. Now, fully grown adult bobbit worms don't typically have any natural predators in the wild. Some larger fish may try to tangle with it, but again, those jaws are not something that you want to mess with. Additionally, since they are polychaetes and bristle worms, they also have very, very good regeneration abilities. You can kind of cut a bobbit worm into multiple different pieces and it will regenerate up into a new, mostly full bobbit worm. They're also occasionally found in aquariums, however, not usually intentionally. They can sneak into aquariums in plants and substrates and other stuff and make a home there and start to grow and are apparently incredibly hard to get rid of without dismantling the entire tank and disrupting the entire aquarium ecosystem. They're also known for preying on fish in aquariums and will eat fish that you want to be there, so they're kind of just a pain in the ass. And if these guys weren't overpowered enough, they are also mildly venomous. Now, the venom isn't strong enough to harm a human permanently. However, it is incredibly uncomfortable, reportedly, causing kind of a painful stinging and then numbness sensation. And in some cases, it has caused permanent or semi-permanent numbness around the site of the sting. Also, I'm not entirely sure whether or not it's just the bristles that are toxic or if the jaws also have a venom, but either way, it would not be pleasant at all to get bit by one of these things. And while they're not typically aggressive, they won't go out of their way to bite humans. If they're, like, stepped on or someone's trying to remove them from, say, an aquarium setting, they will bite. And again, not a very fun experience. And while not typically fast-moving overall, they do have a very, very fast strike speed and retreat speed as well. That is typically used to ambush prey items, but can also be used to retreat incredibly quickly if someone is trying to harass this worm, such as remove it or eat it. Now, all of this to say, I like these worms a lot. They're incredibly strange looking. They're pretty creepy. They have a very nice rainbow iridescent shimmer, which I am always a big fan of. They have such 
incredible survival tactics. They're one of the most overpowered organisms out there, and they're definitely up there with one of my favorite invertebrates. I, I just think they're so cool.